Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the one to five player expansion for Tapestry, Arts and Architecture, designed by Jamie Stegmeier and Mike Young, and published by Stonemeyer Games, who helped sponsor this video. If you'd like to learn how to play the original game, we have a tutorial for that, which I'll link to in the description below. But here, we'll assume you already know how to play, and instead, we'll focus on all the new things this expansion adds to the game. When setting up this expansion, start by shuffling these new civilization mats and its tech and tapestry cards into the matching components of the base game. If you have another tapestry expansion that comes with its own landmark cards, then shuffle the landmark cards from this expansion into any other landmarks that you have. These are the new advanced capital mats, and you can distinguish these from the regular mats because they have a green background. Don't mix these in with your other mats. Instead, set them aside because we'll use them in a moment. Those are the standard elements this new expansion adds, but now we come to the big addition, an arts track. Now, not only will you have the standard four advancement tracks that are on the main board, but this additional arts track to advance on, which you set nearby. Also, replace the original 12-sided science die with the newly included 20-sided one, which includes sides that show the art symbol that we can see here. By the arts board, shuffle this deck of masterpieces, which have this back, and then set it beneath the board in this area here. You then deal three cards off the top of the deck, placing them directly to its right. If you have the Plans and Ploys expansion, then you might already be using landmark tokens on your other advancement tracks. And this expansion includes tokens for the Arts track as well. We'll talk more about the Arts track in a moment, but before we do, I want to explain some of the other adjustments to the setup. After you've received your initial capital, which assigns your starting territory, you're then given one of those set-aside new advanced capital mats randomly at the same time that you gain your two possible civilization mats. Now, in addition to picking which civilization you want to use, you can decide if you want to replace your capital mat with this new one. If so, return the old one to the box and set this one in its place. But note, this doesn't change your starting territory. I would still use the starting territory of the original mat. This expansion provides each player with some new tokens to add to the ones in their supply, and they should move one of these to the first space of the arts track. Each person also collects a set of these four unique inspiration tiles, which we'll see how to use a little later. Once you get to the stage of the setup, where a first player has been picked, the last player in the turn order collects this expansion's landmark cards, shuffles, and then draws a number of them equal to the number of players. They pick one to keep putting it face up in front of themselves and passing the rest counterclockwise, continuing around the table, until each person has taken a single one. Now, if you have the Plans and Ploys expansion for Tapestry as well, you instead start by shuffling all of the landmark cards from that expansion into the ones with this expansion. And then the last player draws a number of them equal to the number of players plus one. They'll look at these and pick one to keep before passing the rest counterclockwise. And any remaining landmarks are then shuffled into a face-down deck. Once you have your landmark, find the related landmark miniature and set it nearby. This expansion comes with five new miniatures for its included landmarks. You'll also find three other unique landmarks for the related arts track, which you can add to the supply. And that's all the adjustments to the setup. So now let's go through the new items and learn how they work, starting with the new arts track. You can now choose to advance on this while playing, and it features some new symbols. When you see this symbol, you gain an income building of your choice from your income tracks. When you're resolving this symbol, you instead gain a victory point for every income building you have. So in this case, I have six income buildings placed and would gain six points. When you see this symbol, it lets you gain a masterpiece card, which are the ones with this back. You then collect any one of the face-up masterpieces, or you can take the top one from the deck. If you take one of the face-up cards, immediately replace it with a new one from the deck. You can place the masterpieces you collect anywhere in your play area, but they recommend setting it onto this Maker of Fire space here. And as you gain additional masterpieces, you can set them on top of each other, but ensure that their top symbols are visible. From now on, at the beginning of each of your income turns, you will also gain all of the rewards showing at the top of your masterpieces, in addition to anything else that you're owed. 
Many masterpiece symbols you'll recognize, but there are a few new ones as well. This will score you a victory point for every completed row in your capital city, while this one gives you points for every completed column. On this masterpiece, we see a symbol that lets you conquer an adjacent empty territory, while the one we see here gives you an upgrade to one of your tech cards. I should mention, though, the tech card you upgrade this way cannot be upgraded more than once this turn. So if I use a masterpiece ability to upgrade this, during that same turn, I can't upgrade it again through some other effect. And that covers the new symbols you'll find on the masterpieces. But now let's go back to the other spaces you'll find on the arts track. With this series of symbols, you may choose to discard all three of the revealed cards beside the masterpiece deck, and then draw three new ones to replace them. This symbol lets you pick any one masterpiece you've already collected and gain its benefits right now. This set of symbols is similar, but instead, you gain the benefit of up to three different masterpiece cards chosen from between the ones you have and your immediate neighbors seated to your left or right. Finally, this light bulb symbol lets you place an inspiration tile onto your income mat. Each player will have four of these inspiration tiles, and you now get to pick any one of them to put on its related track of your board here. If you have any income buildings on that track still, that's okay. Just temporarily remove them, put the upgraded track in place, and then put those buildings back where they were. These will provide you with upgraded income values for their related tracks. But just keep in mind, when you place one of these inspiration tiles on your board, it has to go on the original track that matches its symbols. So this one here that shows the culture symbols would go on the track that also shows the culture symbols. And those are all the main new elements to this expansion, but there are also a few other little things we should go over as well. Some of the new tapestry cards will have continuous abilities, as labeled here, that come into effect when played and then last for the rest of the game, not just during the era they were played in. These particular tapestries also feature building plots, and buildings or landmarks can be placed on these instead of in your capital city, but still score as if they were in your capital city. So if you were scoring points for every income building you have, you would count any that you have on your tapestry cards too. If you place a landmark on a tapestry card, it's okay if it extends beyond its borders. The tapestry will also explain here the benefit you gain for the buildings that you place on it. If through an effect you would have to cover one of these types of tapestry cards with another one, just discard all of the buildings and landmarks on the original tapestry and they will no longer count when scoring buildings in your capital city. You'll also find some new tech cards in this expansion and some, like this one, have a very unique rule. Once you have one of these, as it says here, as soon as you gain a new landmark, you may immediately place it on this tech card. Setting it on top of it like this immediately upgrades the tech card one level. And the landmark will stay here for the rest of the game unless the tech card gets discarded, and then the landmark would also be discarded. If you see this symbol on a tech card's upgrade, it means to perform that upgrade, you must have a landmark already on it. If you would ever be resolving this symbol, it means you can then upgrade a single tech card two times or two different tech cards once each, ignoring any of their prerequisites. You also get some new civilization mats with this expansion, and how they work is detailed on them. We won't go through that here because you can discover that while you play, but I'll leave them on screen for a few seconds if you'd like to pause and take a quick look at them for yourself to try to get a sense of their new effects. Landmarks were introduced in the first expansion for Tapestry, and we have some new ones in this expansion. If you haven't played with these before, you'll start the game with one, and this will show a goal you can work towards. And at the end of a turn where you've accomplished that goal, you then gain the related landmark miniature to place. I should also point out that this alchemist civilization from the original game requires you to roll the die, and if you ever get the arts track symbol, just roll again, as only the original icons work with its ability. Here's another component from the original game that's affected by this expansion. This is the Dark Ages Tapestry card, and it normally allows you to move backwards once on each of three different tracks, and then you advance three times on the remaining track. If you're using the Arts track, you'll actually have two remaining tracks to pick from, and you pick just one of them to advance on. Now, another thing to realize is that if you decide you don't want to play with the Arts track or Inspiration tiles in a future game, you don't have to separate all the expansion components out from the game. Instead, if you ever draw a tapestry, tech, or civilization mat that refers to the arts track, just 
discard it, and draw a replacement. That said, if you ever do want to separate out the components that work specifically with the arts track, just look for any that show this symbol and remove them. And if you want to remove the entire arts and architecture expansion from your core game, just remove any that show this double A symbol we see here. Also, here on the back of the rulebook, there are a few additional rules and clarifications worth going over, including the updated tiebreaker rules and previously released adjustments to the original civilizations meant to help further improve game balance. So take these into account when playing. The game also comes with rules and components for solo and advanced two-player games, which I'll leave for you to discover on your own. Otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play the Arts and Architecture expansion for Tapestry. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. And if you'd like to support us directly, you can join our Patreon team, which I'll have linked below. But until next time, thanks for watching.